Hey folks, Nathan here. Welcome to Nate's Favorite Deck Building Games. We continue our look at the DC Deck Building Game with kind of an offshoot here this time. This is the game known as Teen Titans Go Deck Building Game. You notice this is a first printing, so it says there's a promo inside. Later printings won't say that. It's from Cryptozoic. It's part of the same Cerberus engine of deck building games, but it's kind of a weird game. Remember, we already got Teen Titans back as the fourth major set for the DC deck building game. Now we have one that's based more on the Teen Titans Go cartoon that has some unique characteristics to it. Some people don't consider this part of the DC deck building game. I at least initially didn't. But you'll notice that inside the box, you're gonna get a randomizer for the DC deck building game multiverse box and a divider. So obviously their intent is that this is gonna be part of the DC deck building game. And it plays very similarly with a few tweaks you, of course, will have a rule book that breaks it all down, looks a little different, but you got everything that you need there to play this game, either as a standalone or mixed in with other sets. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, we start out with our superheroes, okay, and we've got five that come with the set, but there's also that promo card if you get a first printing. So we have Robin, Beast Boy, Raven, Starfire, and Cyborg. And then our promo card is Kid Flash. Now, what's interesting about these is that they've got a regular superhero on one side with its ability, but on the back, there's a sidekick rather than superhero version of that card that has something different listed here, okay? Typically, it'll say recruit and then give you some information. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. Now, this is a game that is designed actually for only two players, so we have our punches to go into our starting decks, and it's going to be seven punches, so we have 14 of these. But then instead of vulnerability, we have snack time and get three of these in each starter, so there are six of these. In this case, rather than just doing nothing, it says put a weakness from your discard pile on the bottom of the weaknesses stack. So the other card that goes in your starting hand this time, or starting deck this time, instead of just being useless, actually helps you get rid of weaknesses. Now, the weaknesses work a little bit differently as well, and there are 10 of them. Notice they're face up over here, and whereas the weaknesses in the other games are essentially one standardized type, instead, for this game, the weaknesses all have some effect. They're still worth zero for your victory pile, and still aren't really going to do anything when you have them in your hand that's going to help you, but they play differently. They have different effects listed on each one. When you take one of these and put it in your discard pile because of some effect that causes you to gain a weakness, let's grab, uh, as an example here, something more straightforward. Let's grab Kittens, the one that was on top before. Okay? So one of these gets put in your discard pile. Eventually it gets shuffled into your deck. The next time that you have to shuffle it, eventually it winds up in your hand. Rather than a weakness just staying in your hand because it's useless and will just count against you later um, as a negative one against your victory points, Notice here, it's just a zero for victory points, so it's not going to help you, but it's also not going to subtract. But when you play your turn, when you have your hand, you have to play weaknesses before you can play anything else. And the weaknesses do something to hinder you, like in this case, minus two power. Or, let's see, reveal the top card of the main deck. You can't buy cards from the lineup this turn with the same cost as the revealed card, and so on and so on. But they do stay face up over here. So you can see what's coming the next time someone is unfortunate enough to get a weakness. So weaknesses do play somewhat differently. Our always available card to purchase is not a kick this time. Instead, it is Titans Go, which is considered starter, not superpower here. Plus two power, as we'd expect from a kick, but then it's also a defense card uh, worth zero towards your victory points. As for the card types inside your main deck, for the most part, they're all ones we've seen before. Location, hero, superpower, equipment, and villain. But we also have a set here of event cards. Six of these. Now, these event cards are not like crisis cards and such. They basically just get stuffed into your deck. Okay? They get shuffled in. And then when one pops up, it goes to sit next to the Nemesis stack, as we'll talk about over here, and that event has an ongoing effect. And to get rid of one of these that's in effect, 
you have to take out that nemesis, what this game calls the supervillains, essentially. When you take one of them out, you can remove one of these from the game. And essentially, they're just there to add weird and wacky things to play uh, a little bit differently for certain chunks of your game. So in this case, uh, attacks you play resolve against you as well. Or uh, each time you buy or gain a card, reveal the top card of the main deck. If the revealed card matches the card type of the card you bought or gained, gain a weakness and so on. But it tells you underneath, each time a player defeats a nemesis, they remove an event from play. And that is not an optional thing. You must remove an event from play, even if you like the ongoing effect that it has. It actually suggests that when you first start playing, you don't put the events into the main deck. And then once you're used to the game, shuffle them in. And when they happen to pop out, they immediately go over here and go into play. That spot in the lineup does not get filled. Remember, in the DC deck building game, the lineup, the center row, the trade row, depending on what game you're talking about, in this case they call it the lineup, doesn't get immediately refilled when something is removed from it, unlike, say, Ascension or Star Realms. I would also note that the timing of refilling the lineup does change for this set. In the traditional DC deck building game, you have your turn sequence of playing the cards, totaling up the power and purchasing cards, combined cost of less than or equal to that total, and so on. And as soon as you buy or gain a card, you place it in your discard pile, etc., etc. And then at the end of turn, they lay out, as in, say, the original game's end of turn instructions here, that you put all the cards you played and any remaining cards from your hand into your discard pile, draw a new hand of five cards. Fill each empty slot in the lineup with a card from the top of the main deck as part of your end of turn instructions. And then at the top card of the supervillain stack is face down, you flip it face up and do the first appearance attack if it has one. That is not the way this one plays. Um, you're basically going to start each character's turn or each player's turn by filling the lineup. It is not one of the last things done for the current player. It's one of the first things, in fact, the first thing done for the next player. And then once you've got your hand, then you have to play all your weaknesses as opposed to just leaving them in your hand. Then you play your regular cards and so on and so on. And at the end of the turn, that's when you take any ones that are left in your hand and put them in the discard pile, do any at the end of your turn effects and so on and so on and so on until you get to the point where if the Nemesis stack has a nemesis that's face down, you flip it up and do the first appearance attack. But nowhere in the end of turn process do you refill the lineup. That is done at the beginning of the next player's turn. So that is a significant timing difference. Because remember, this is a game, just like all the other DC deck building games, that ends if you reach a point where you need to flip up a new supervillain, or in this case a nemesis, and there isn't one, or you need to put another card from the main deck into the lineup to refill it, and there isn't one to do that. That's when you stop play and then add up your victory points, as you will in this case as well. Now, I keep saying Nemesis. That is because that is what this game calls its supervillains. Nemesis, supervillain, the type and subtype of the card. Generally speaking, they play pretty much like any other supervillains do. The one on the top that's always on top doesn't have a first appearance attack. All the other ones do have a first appearance attack and so on. The biggest difference here being that they all have the same amount of victory points and the same 10 power cost. Uh, you're going to have 9 in the package. You put Control Freak face up on top. You take all the other ones, shuffle them, remove one, stick Control Freak on top. There's your Nemesis stack. And again, because they are a Nemesis, it does allow you to get rid of an event if you happen to have one that is in play at the time. But otherwise, you go after them just like normal. The other interesting new mechanic that's brought in here for Teen Titans Go is the sidekick ability. As I mentioned, our superheroes have sidekick versions of themselves. So each player is going to have a superhero. Let's say that my character uh, is Robin. So that's me, right? I can use that ability once during each of your turns if you control a hero and an equipment plus one power and draw a card. I can use that at any time on my turn because that's me. I'm Robin. But over here off to the side, once each player has taken their character, let's say that one's Beast Boy, over here is a stack of sidekicks. And each one says recruit something. Recruit, draw three or more cards during your turn. Recruit, play two equipment. Recruit, play two cards with a cost of one or two. Recruit, play two villains, and so on. As soon as you do whatever it requires, you can then recruit that individual onto your team as a sidekick and use their ability, in this case underneath, if you control a villain, plus one power. So there's a recruit that tells you how to get it, and there's some ability 
very much like if it was a superhero, but not the same ability necessarily. Well, as you play, you're going to have sidekicks, so is your opponent. And when you fulfill the recruit requirements for a character, for a sidekick, that one can either come from this stack of unused ones over here, or it jumps from one side to the other. So Beast Boy, when he's a sidekick, recruit has played two superpowers. So if I play two superpowers, but this card has been uh, a character on the team of my opponent, as soon as I play two superpowers on that turn, whoop, Beast Boy is now with me on my team instead. And they go back and forth and back and forth. Sometimes you will run into a card that is specific to what your team includes. Like in this case, plus one power. But if Beast Boy's on your team, put a superhero from your discard pile into your hand. So the team makeup can make a difference. Sometimes you can recruit a sidekick without necessarily having to meet the recruit requirements. Like this one, plus one power. Recruit a sidekick at the end of your turn. Lose it. Well, in this case, if you're going to recruit a sidekick, but it's not by meeting a certain requirement, you just pull one from the stack of sidekicks over here off to the side. Okay? But you can recruit one the normal way. You can recruit one with a card. Uh, you can steal a sidekick. In this case, plus two power and choose a foe. Attack. Steal a sidekick from that foe. And you can actually just take one from them to you. Okay? Uh, each foe loses a sidekick. You can lose a sidekick and it goes back into the pile over here. Uh, plus one power for each sidekick on your team. All kinds of odd stuff. And then sometimes you run into ones that almost feel like Deadpool uh, for the Marvel Legendary game where it's something you're supposed to do in real life that's kind of weird. This is not a keyword that's built into the game. This is something you're supposed to do. Uh, play this one. Uh, it's a hero. Plus one power. High five a foe. Like, literally, high five them. You and that foe each draw a card. Kind of weird. Uh, it's not a keyword that you'll find within the instructions. So, kind of a different way of playing. Uh, it's designed so that you're basically just playing with one superhero, and that's where the other ones are able to come in as sidekicks, rather than using the variants of some of the other games where one player plays with multiple superheroes as long as there's an even number for each player. Uh, the events make for something interesting to sort of change things up, and really that sidekick mechanic is the thing that you're going to find that's the most unusual back and forth, although I tend to like the fact that the weaknesses work a little bit different because it makes them a bit more dynamic for the gameplay. But bear in mind, if you are trying to play with more than just two players, this really isn't a game that's designed for it. It's kind of a middle ground between a regular set and Rivals. It plays more like a regular set than it plays like Rivals, but it's built for two players instead of four or more the way that a Rivals game is. Now before we go, just to make sure that it's clear, because I've been asked a couple of times about how many cards come in this package because it doesn't really look like the same size of package that we're used to, Again, as I said before, you have 14 punch cards, you have six snack time cards, which are your other starter cards, kind of like the vulnerability there. You have 64 main deck cards, you have your six Titan Go cards, or Titans Go cards, that's the ones over there replacing the kicks. You have your nine Nemesis cards, but you're only using eight at a time. You have 10 weakness cards. And then you have your six event cards along with your five superhero slash sidekick cards unless you got the one that's a first printing, in which case you have Kid Flash, which gives you a total of six. And then with that, you have your randomizer, you have your divider, and you have your rule book. Again, it's kind of weird. Not quite a traditional part of the DC deck building game, but it's basically just the DC deck building game given some interesting new tweaks Presented as a standalone game for those who maybe haven't tried a deck building game before, but presented in such a way that if you want to build this into your game for the DC deck building game, whether it's multiverse or otherwise, you certainly can. And it does give you plenty of instructions in the rule guide to let you know how to do that most effectively and which effects work in slightly different ways depending on how you're doing that. So if you're a fan of the DC deck building game, it may look a little weird, but I would actually recommend picking up Teen Titans Go deck building game, especially if you tend to play mainly with two players instead of more. With that, we'll wrap this up, but we'll continue with more coverage of the DC deck building game as more materials are released.